Did you guys know that back in the late 1800s, a gentleman by the name of Joseph Salvatore, he came to Trinidad and Tobago and set up a huge business. Well, he started off small and set up a vast empire eventually and one of the largest department stores. And now we have a book about him and the work that he's done. And sharing with us some of this information about the book, about the launch, about the impact of Mr. Salvatore, I want to welcome creative industry specialist Lorraine O'Connor. Good morning to you, Lorraine. Hi, good morning, Rokas. How are you? Good morning, everybody. You all right? Mm -hmm. So tell us, tell us about, the, about the book, Salvatore Un Corso a Trinidad. Am I pronouncing yeah. that anywhere let me, let close to correct? It. Let me repeat it. Yes. Salvatore Un Corso a Trinidad. So with the little French accent. Well, actually, Joseph is my great grandfather. Um, so I have always been fascinated by his story mm -hmm. you know as a child i knew of the salvatore building i actually visited neil fleur my great grandmother um before she passed i was about seven and i remember going to neil fleur and seeing her there but i never really understood the story behind who he was you know like there were medals on my grandfather's wall you know there was a letter signed by general de gaulle you know i mean i guess i hope people know who that is <laughs> I mean, very famous <laughs> French president and also to France through, you know, the Second World War. Um, so all this fascination and there weren't a lot of tangible um, archives because unfortunately the Salvatore building, um, before it was the building, it was the Salvatore Scott and Sons, it was a department store right. and it burnt right. in 1958, um, a big, big fire downtown. Mm -hmm. And with it, a lot of my great grandfather's archives and personal belongings um, it was so distressing to him that actually he died six months later. Um, wow. And I, I do believe it was from a broken heart, from losing his life's work. Um, but he did have a very, very rich life. So um, fortunately, there are companies like Plantin. Um, so Plantin, if you all don't know about them, they're amazing. They research and go into the stories of the families. Um, this is actually what they do. This is their job. They do research on, gene on genealogy and ancestry. So we commission them um, to do the research and to interview the family members alive and to see what they could dig up. And they came up um, with a book um, called, well, let me give you a few here, Salvatore in Corsu, a Trinidad. So this is the hard copy I'm showing you here. Okay. And we do have a, a soft copy version as well. What so is these are going to be launched on Thursday evening and the serendipity of the whole thing is that Neil Fleur um, was where my, they lived for over 50 years and of course the National Trust has just moved into Neil Fleur to mm -hmm. be their home and um, we are able to do this with them and celebrate on Thursday you know the reopening the rebirth of Neil Fleur the story of Joseph and Cecilia and the Salvatore's and just understanding better the history of our country and the people who created it. Um, Lorraine, what does what does the title of the book mean? Can you translate it for me? Sure. So of course, it's Salvatore, his name, and a Corsican in Trinidad. So he um, was from a very um, poor family in Corsica. He's a farmer, and like a lot of young men at that time, because I'm now as I'm doing a lot of personal research as well, because um, of course, you know, I'm a filmmaker. So. <laughs> Just letting that hang there. <laughs> so yes, so Corsica, um, he, a lot of young men at that time left Corsica in their early t in their teens to go and look for a better life, you know, to go on and, and try and, and do something. And he was a farmer and obviously that wasn't satisfactory to him. So he left, he left and came to the Caribbean. Well, first Venezuela, that's usually where they landed. Venezuela was the land of promise at the time, you know, we, besides cocoa, it was gold and, um, you know, just the frontier of, of discovery and of great adventures. So yeah, he came to the Caribbean and, you know, built up this empire really from hard work, thinking that he was an uneducated, you know, poor farmer from Corsica. It's quite extraordinary what he accomplished and that he was actually, you know, having tea and dinners with the French presidents and so on, you know. Definitely a story to be told, and I'm really happy that you guys are able to tell this story. So I understand there's also an ex exhibition happening at Meals Well, yes. So 
we have some, and although we lost a lot of the archives, there were still some remaining. So we have some extraordinary photos um, from that time. Um, also, you know, uh, mementos like a menu. We have a menu dating from 1937 of a dinner held at Minfleur, okay. um, the actual menu. So um, the National Trust have taken it on to actually put on this exhibition and um, to blow up some of these pictures and let the public have a closer access. And also it's a way of people coming into Mean Fleur and starting to create that, that flow and that um, opening it up you know, to the public. So very excited about that because you know, for years I watched it there around the Savannah, yeah. looking very sad. <laughs> well, I actually, I went uh, the other day when we were shooting the video for Freetown's um, Oshun and the, I was just amazed just standing in there. I saw actually just yesterday or day before somebody got married there as well. So I think that uh, definitely has been the National Trust has been making use of it and, and inviting people to come on in and make use of it as well. So the launch is happening this Thursday. It's from 5 to 7 p.m. I understand that it's going to be broadcasted uh, live on social media as well as on TV. Yes, it is. So thank you, TTT, for joining as a partner um, to showcase um, the, some of our history. And yes, it will be live on social media. Unfortunately, you know, I would have, you know me, I would have loved to have had a big launch, music, and you know, lots of um, tributes and whatever. But due to the restrictions, we're going to keep it small and tight. We are going to have some readings, um, you know, and, um, and a little talk about the book and about the story and uh, and so on. So it'll be a nice, um, you know, two hours where people will get to see Neil Fleur and get to see us there. Um, some of the descendants of the Salvatore present, of family will be present. So um, yeah, please tune in. The information is going to be on the social media uh, today or tomorrow. It'll be basically um, live, as you said, on um, the National Trust, on the planting um, feed, and also on TTT. Fantastic. I look forward to it, and congratulations on this project. I also look forward to the movie that you're hinting at. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, let's do it. Let's do it. We have these are the great stories we have to tell, you know. And the book will be available. So it's very interesting. I just want to close off by saying the book will be available in Trinidad at the National Trust and at paper base. That's nice. a physical hard copy. But you can also order it online, not to get a, a soft a download copy, huh? but to, you can order it through Blurb. Who, so it's like a print-on-demand facility, right. and they will print the copy of the book and ship it to you anywhere in the world. Fantastic. Anywhere. Congratulations. It's like an Amazon for books. Nice. Congratulations again, Lorraine, and we look forward to more to come. Okay, thank you so much. No problem. Care, Enjoy everybody. the rest of your day. Have a great day. Take care.